father's name was Reuben Brown. He was a devout man of God and a pillar of his local church. My earliest memories of he and I were the two of us visiting convalescent hospitals, delivering meals to bedridden elders. Well, one time when I was eight, we were delivering to one of the church ushers who had been sick for about a year or so. It had been a while since she'd seen me. So as I went to her bedside to extend my hand, she ignored that hand and looked straight at my grandfather and said, damn, look how fucking fat this boy done got. <laughs> He's as wide as he is tall. So I swallowed that gulp in my throat that had a little bit of pre progressive pride I had, asked her where the restroom is, and in the moment Terry sanctuary of that stall, I shed just enough tears that allowed me to return to her bedside, look her respectfully in the eyes, and continue to smile just the way my family had taught me. I'd learned how to hate my body from my mother, who'd learned it from her mother, who'd learned it from her colonizer. From age six, I knew what Weight Watchers was. Knew that my mother had purple gym shorts that said crunch along the left thigh, knew that she was always working, always sweating, always dissatisfied. Because then she tried Atkins, and then she tried South Beach, and then I tried South Beach. The year was 2005. I had just turned 11. My mother, heart disease. My father, diabetic all in which tether to side effects of my appearance. But no, no health can change the materialistic point of views of how a Filipino family can be so in front of judging the sizes of your waist. Anna, lose some weight. Straight up in a disappointed way. How do you expect me to feel that I don't fit the image criteria for this family? For this supposed culture? countless years of convincing them that I'm fine and no matter how thick I am on the skin, the only words that pierce through each layer would be the ones I care about the most. I am fine, however. Too much damage grows numbness. I'm not numb, I'm okay. I'm fine, I'm fine with how I am. I stare my reflection in the mirror. Why am I doing this to myself? Losing my mind on a tiny error. I nearly left the real me on the shelf. No, 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 no. The word fat weighs more than the abundantly ample bodies it normally attaches itself to. I've been dodging that label like a red rubber ball in a game of dodgeball longer than I can remember. But as I aged, the ball thrown increased in size and velocity exponentially as my body followed suit, meaning it became rounder and more hard to ignore to other people. That three-letter word in all of its manifestations, that three-letter word in all of its manifestations have become bulging disc in an already overworked spine, curving itself into a question mark, bringing my head down and my shoulders to a hunch. But unlike a true hunchback, I have no cathedral tower to hide in. Cause you know, life. From chubby to husky, from fat to fatty, to fat boy to fat man to fat fuck, to for God's sakes, go do some fucking weight, you fat piece of shit. I cannot, despite my tears, despite my prayers, and all of the fad dieting, I cannot escape the weight of this label. The first thing my family did when I returned home after living abroad was comment on my weight loss. I spent the entire 13-hour flight preparing myself for their comments. It seems like Filipino parents can never decide if they want to scold you for getting too fat or scold you for not eating enough. Because when my mom hugged me at night, my first night catch, she said it felt different, that I felt bad. I never knew how to react to how people react to my body. A dear friend of mine once referred to her body as it is a separate entity, a mental and emotional and physical space that she can visit and leave. I wish this body felt like home. 
I wish my home felt like family, and I wish my family would stop commenting on my fucking body. Brushing my hair, do I look perfect? I forgot what I do to fit the mold. The more I try, the less it's working. Cause everything inside me seems na 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 no. Side by side, standing side by side, we might look like before and after. An interracial number 10 of sorts. But despite his current appearance, he remembers the crippling fear of looking into the mirror, grabbing two handfuls of himself, watching the fat roll between the spaces in his fingers like a viral plague with no cure. The thing is, to have that same reflection look back at you in the mirror and make you feel smaller than you actually wished that you were. See, if you say them fast enough and at the right pitch, the word infinite sounds a lot like the word insignificant. I only recently began navigating the world in this body. I lost most of my weight just in the past year, and for my entire life I was overweight if not obese. I heard it all growing up. I went on my first diet when I was fresh out of elementary school, so even though I manifest in this body that you see before you today, I understand what it's like to be you. And you. I understand because it's still me. At the end of the day, I still have those experiences. The people staring at me on the street like I don't belong. The sneers on public transit is if I'm made to feel lesser than for existing in a body that's greater than the national average. Don't even get me started on airplane seats. As a high schooler, I was already six feet tall and pushing 300 pounds. But see, it's those experiences, that adversity that connects us. I'm grateful to come from a family who didn't necessarily raise me to become a doctor or a nurse. When I was nine, I wanted to become a baker, and my mom let me explore the culinary arts from our home on the weekends. And when I was 13, I wanted to dance, and she let me take classes for that. But there's a difference between sharing my art with my family and sharing my art with my family here. I'm reborn and rejuvenated every time. The homie JP and I call it church because spiritually and emotionally and creatively, I feel at home when I get to share my art here. There's this culture we foster here together, a culture of healing and growth and renewal that we get to take part in every time somebody comes up on this stage where we reveal the deepest things about ourselves to each other in four minutes or less. That too is family. A bond of brotherhood, birthed in a river of tears that found out the chubby cheeks of three little boys who literally, literally broke the mold. We don't fit in. We never did, and most likely, we never will. But through pen strokes, keyboard presses, melodies, hums, and strums, we are planting the seeds for our new family tree. And underneath it, open mics will be the family reunion. And the only, the only appearances that matter there is you all coming and being present. It's okay not to be okay. Sometimes it's hard. And the blood on your heart. The tears don't mean you're losing. Everybody's losing. Just be true to who you are.